Journey into comics. Poor 360. Journey into wrestling. Foodies watching movies. Adulting in the Podcastrophe. Kids for Sale. Voice Survival Podcast. Crucial Tunes. Gallif Radio. Bruise with Dudes. Dungeons with Dudes. Subscribe to Journey into Comics Network on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, or at journeyintocomics.com. The following, following. The following. Is a journey into comics. Journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. It's a journey into comics. Journey into comics. Journey into comics. Network. 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 Production. Production. Hey guys, Dick here from Podcastrophy Podcast, and you are listening to the best of the Journey into Comics Network, where we take the best of each episode from the week and we highlight it for you and bring it to you in the form of this podcast today. So, uh, if you want, you know. You know, just uh, take a breather, relax, listen to the best of the Journey into Comics Network. And, you know, just do me a favor. Just do me one solid favor. Try to make every day a big dick day. Thanks, guys. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Journey into Comics. I told you a minute ago that I'm I'm struggling putting words together because I just, you know, you and I pretty much both just watched the um, Mandalorian tra- trailer from the panel at uh, the Star Wars experience, and I don't. I'm 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 so happy and excited and emotional. Like I I'm struggling to to talk. Dude, at there least- was there's. At least to form coherent sentences. Okay, so I'm going to try to guide you on this one a little bit because, see, this weekend in Chicago is Star Wars Celebration. They've been doing all kinds of panels, having all kinds of surprises. They literally said, every day we've got something for you. Fucking Friday, they dropped the the new trailer for the Episode Nine, which we're going to talk about with title in a minute and reveal that a little bit later in the episode. Uh, they dropped on Saturday was the Mandalorian stuff, or was Fallen Order Saturday and today was Mandalorian? I can't... It was something like that. Uh, yesterday was Fallen Order, today was Mandalorian. There we go. That's right, that's right. So see, like, every day they've had the movie division, the fucking games division, and now the television division, which is going to be a part of Disney+, Plus, which fucking signed me up for six ninety nine a month. Right. Cancel Netflix, get Disney+. Plus. Well, There's, I think... It's a no-brainer. So I think that's a that's a good place to jump in because I don't know if you saw kind of the numbers on what happened to Netflix's uh stocks the moment that the Disney Plus streaming service was announced. They lost Didn't like it drop thirty like billion dollars. It it like I, I think, you know, obviously rough numbers, but I, I think it equated to like thirty billion dollars. Oh man, that's a hit, man. <laughs> and I don't like it at least for our household, um you know, we recently canceled cable. I'm a I'm a big uh scream it from the rooftops, really dig in YouTube TV, big fan of that. Um I get Hulu for free because I'm a T-Mobile customer or uh, not T-Mobile. Um I pay for Spotify Premium so I get Hulu for free. Does that come but with I, premium Hulu or just basic Hulu? No, it's just basic Hulu. Um, so you have to suffer through commercials. Yeah, but but they're really they're really not that often, and it's not something that um, like YouTube TV. I can't. I think I can pay more to get to get it ad free, but the commercials are so few and far between, and they're so short that. Why would why would I pay you know ten to fifteen dollars extra a month just to remove thirty seconds a program you know and the nice thing is and I've never had Hulu without ads so I can't say or I, I don't really even watch Hulu to be honest with you but like it, the moment it starts it tells you how many ads there's going to be and how long it's going to last and they're not normally any more than thirty seconds so oh that's not bad. It's not like it's not like when I was watching cable TV and I had you know ten to fifteen minutes of continuous commercials, um, you know five five OxyClean commercials in a row showing me an identical commercial um, at the same time basically. But I think 
at least for our household, we're not going to cancel Netflix because w- at least for, for Skylar and I, we've been so impressed with kind of the, the in-house Netflix stuff, you know, the Netflix original stuff they've been doing the last um, 12 to 18 months. And there's there's a lot of how do I want to say it? There's a lot of, of, of people with IP that, that Netflix has reached out to and they're like, well, we've been ra- we've been waiting for the right people to, to basically bring our material to life. And I think Netflix has done that and will continue to do that for a lot of, a lot of artists. So I'm not going to turn my back on Netflix cause I, I've been with Netflix since the, the mail me a DVD a month generation you know um but i can tell you for a fact that in november when the the it's november right when disney drops i think it's like november 12th yeah yeah when that drops we will have it day one i will cancel my free hulu with uh spotify and do whatever package they can do that that couples disney plus and hulu together you Um, know what's gonna happen man i mean come on they own fucking hulu I, I saw an article a couple days ago, and I wish I could find it. I looked for it for a little bit, but it said flat out that when Disney Plus drops in November, there will be packages with Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu together, and in any variation of those, where it's just Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, just ESPN Plus, and Hulu. Um, apparently, they have a lot of a lot of different combinations that you can kind of. Customize it to how you want it, and I, and I think that's incredible. You know, it's fucking bitching, man. And did you hear all the shit that's going to be on Disney Plus? <clears throat> so, I was reading an article yesterday or the day before, and um, the Disney execs were being really, really modest about it. Like, yeah, we're only having five hundred movies at launch, and you know that was like the first first or second paragraph of the article when they were really trying to break it down and, and still be as vague as they possibly could. Because I think they have a lot of tricks up their sleeves still. But there will be there will be 500 movies and like 300 different TV shows. Shit. And I was like, I was like, okay, Disney, I see you being modest with your 500 movies because... <laughs> If I could find the article, I could give you the exact numbers for comparison. But when, when Netflix, uh, when Netflix streaming debuted, they had a much larger catalog. And in my mind, it's like, why, why would you not hype up the fact that you have five hundred of the greatest movies of all time? Yeah, it's you not know? just five hundred movies here, Disney. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not. It's not 450 B movies and then the best 50 movies that have ever come out of the studio. This is basically the 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 you know cream of the crop 500 movies out of the Disney vault. So I, I don't. Mean, dude, Aliens going to be streaming on that, right? Predators going to be streaming on that. Mm-hmm. Alien versus Predator is going to stream on that. Now that that's Avatar, the Avatar, which I don't really get down with Avatar, but I'm just going to use that as an example of of another big movie that they have in their fucking pocket now. I think when we finish the the Avatar kind of cinematic universe, that's how I'm going to label it right now because I don't have a better way to say it. Sure, I think the I'm, ACU. Yes, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna convert you to a fan of Avatar, but. That's for okay, another I mean, day. I have the movie on Blu-ray. I fucking watched it in theaters like six goddamn times because everybody was like, "We gotta go see Avatar." You know, like I just don't remember what even that movie was about. That's the that's the sad thing. Dances with Wolves with Blue Aliens. Yeah, I think you said that to me at LaFiCon last year. <laughs> that's what <laughs> like, exactly, I mean. Exactly seriously, that. if you put Dances with Wolves up on one screen and Avatar up on the other screen, they have almost identical runtimes, and the plot is identical. Oh shit! But but Dances with Wolves is one of the greatest films of all time. So wait a minute, I, I've heard the same argument though that it was Pocahontas though. It could and be that Avatar. too. Yeah, I mean Pocahontas. They're all basically the same plot. God damn it! 
<laughs> God damn movies making the same movie over and over and over again, recycling. But it works. People buy in. You know, people are all about it. Uh, it's crazy to think, though, you look at their library and they're going to have, like, the entirety of the MCU day one. You can stream mm-hmm. all the MCU, boom, right there at your fingertips. You can fucking stream the entire Star Wars saga with Solo, with Rogue One, with Clone Wars, mm-hmm. and all the other TV shows, Rebels, and fucking everything in between there, man. Massive, what expansive. Kind of, <clears throat> what kind of a wait time do you think there's going to be from, let's say, uh, preview night of the theater until it, it until something uh, eventually or inevitably ends up on the dr- Disney streaming service? Oh, like uh, how many months from the time we see something on a premiere night to the time we see mm-hmm. it dropping? Well, I can because you, you know it. Exa- because you know, for it, you, it, 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 go ahead. At least, at least as far as things um, from the from the time it ends up in the box office, or from the time it leaves the box office until something ends up on DVD or Blu-ray, it's not always a concrete number. Some things get there faster than others. Um, you know, some things uh, might take an uh, like an excessive amount of time to get from one to the other, and I, I don't, I've never really quite figured that out. I don't know if it's to extend box office runs or, you know, what really the science behind that is. But I'm, I'm curious to see what you have to say. So I think I can actually answer a little bit of your question about the time that it takes to carry over, how long it stays in theaters and stuff, and it is very much to do with box office numbers. I mean, imagine. We're going to just talk about Endgame a lot today, so we'll just use this as the example. Mm -hmm. I just read a report that it is literally sold five times as many pre-sale tickets as... Okay, ready for this? It sold as many pre... It's five times as many pre-sale tickets as The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, Infinity War, and Black Panther combined five times over. Okay, so that movie's probably going to have a really long summer into... We're gonna, I mean, you're going to be watching Spider-Man Far From Home and being able to see it right after you go and see Endgame still in July. I guarantee it. There's no question. You it'll think have... It, I was going to say, you think it, it? You honestly think it'll have that long of a box office run? The end of April, 1st of May, so you're going to have the entire month of May to cover spread mm-hmm. there's not really anything in may coming out that's going to dethrone endgame then you go into june and what's getting hyped spider-man it's going to be lightning hot still people are talking about it it's the historic thing you're probably going to have theaters at some point say why don't we do big events for a while and start showing the entire mcu in order and then end it with endgame if the story pans out and is as successful as we all assume it's probably going to be so Mm-hmm. This is why I'm banking one more thing on the on the link. So it goes to July. So let's look at July, August, September, October. Four months from July is November. Mm-hmm. November 12th, there's the Disney streaming service. So what's going to be the first major movie they launch with the Disney streaming service? It's got to be Endgame. Yeah, it's so, got to be. Well, I, Endgame, Endgame slash Captain Marvel, because Captain Marvel will be the first uh, MCU movie to not go directly to Netflix. Correct. I'm glad you mentioned that, because, yes, that is true. It is, it is going to be Ant-Man and the Wasp was the last movie that's going to go mm-hmm. to Netflix. And then... How's that going to work? Is that all, all that stuff going to abruptly just be gone, or will it be duly streamed because of contracts? How does that work? Uh, no. <laughs> as far as far as as far as the duly stream uh, goes, no. I've seen reports, uh, or not reports. I've seen like um, notifications when I get like my Netflix monthly statement that these or this catalog of movies will be removed from Netflix on this day. So ah. you have up and you have up until this day to watch it. So I would imagine that Netflix is it, through contract through contractual obligation or whatever they have to do to continue to make money up until November the 12th. I would imagine that other than the um Marvel TV shows which obviously all have been removed um I would say that the the MCU catalog and Star Wars are going to stay on the Disney streaming service or on Netflix until November the 11th, and I would imagine at midnight on the 12th that those are all Bam. removed. 
yeah, they're gone. Exciting time. My hope is is that like, you know, maybe in August or July, somewhere around there, Disney starts putting out the beta, the last push beta, and it's like get in early, get early access, and only pay four ninety nine for the first year. You know, for mm-hmm. you know for whatever or whatever because they do do. I mean, I don't know if Disney's big time, so I don't know if they'll actually do that, but. It would be sweet. That way people get a little bit of a feel for how the system's going to work. I mean, you don't want to just say, okay, let's open up the servers and hope everything doesn't get bogged down day one because you got a lot of people, man, lots of people with their eyes on this plus service, like you said, with ESPN and Hulu being included. Well, and one kind of one thing that I want to touch on is, you know, Disney, the Disney-Fox deal um, created so many ripples in the industry that your big cable providers on November the 12th, or at least in preparation for November the 12th, I think you're going to see the big cable providers push to, to maintain their customer base really hard. You know, I, I, I've told the story on the last couple podcasts that I've done about what, what lengths Comcast was willing to go to to maintain my, uh, maintain my business, and it was lowering my bill $3.00. I would imagine that on November the 12th, the amount of people that that join this generation of people cutting the cord and going strictly um, streaming service-based, at least for their in-home t- entertainment, I would imagine that that number, number is going to quadruple in 24 hours. <laughs> So really, before me, you really didn't have a lot of, like, pet exposure. I mean, I did. It was just very... I only had maybe one friend growing up that had a dog. Um, and it was mostly in middle school was when we met... Or no. I think we went... No, we went to... It was elementary school and middle school, but she had, like, a little Shih Tzu dog that was really cute. And I can't remember her name to save my life, but... The dog's name, but it was a really sweet dog, and she's old, and hmm. it was sad when she died because whenever I went to her house, it always was super quiet. After the dog died, and pretty much after that, like, well, I mean, my like my uncles always had a dog. Um, when I was growing up, they had Aspen the Samoyed, which was really she was a really good dog, and then she ended up having arth- arthritis, and they had to like, she was I don't know maybe sixteen when she died. Hmm. And then now they have Cody, which is like this poor, sad little dog that has all these health issues that just won't die. I'm probably going to see it this weekend. Yeah. He's I'm, okay. I'm assuming he's, he's coming. Yeah, but he's not coming here, that's for sure. No, no. That's too much chaos for our house. Yeah, I don't know how he gets along with other dogs. Okay. Yeah, he's... Yeah, that's pretty much... They're all like secondhand. It wasn't like I ever got to like... Like, hang out with them for an extended period of time. It was just, like, right. occasional. You should tell your pet store story. When Oh, like how my dad's friend owned a pet store? Uh-huh. Yeah, so my dad's... And it's actually very close to where we live right now, but my dad's friend um, owned a pet store in town, and um, my parents helped kind of build it. And so... They had a whole big side with a bunch of birds. Like, they did... They had this huge, like, finch, like, aviary. They had, um, like, all these exotic parrots and um, parakeets and cockatiels and cockatoos. Like, anything you could think of, they probably had. And they hand-raised them. And then the other side, they had just, like... I mean, really anything you could think... A normal pet store before all those laws were put in place. They had puppies. They had a lot of different kinds of fish. They had gerbils, hamsters, guinea pigs, but then, then they had, and reptiles and whatever, but then they had some interesting ones. Like, for a while, he was able to sell potbelly pigs, so there was this little, like, ceramic, like, tub type thing, and the pig, like, little piglets would be running around. I don't remember that as much. My parents, I remember telling me about that, but The best pet that they had, and it wasn't for sale, it was one of his own pets, was the spider monkey named Stella. 
And I don't know how they came across Stella. I think it was maybe like she was a baby and they had like rescued her or something because they're both very, um, the family friend and her, his wife were very into animals. So she was kind of like the pet store mascot and she was like had her little enclosure and it was really cool. I mean, we never, like, I never got to, like, pet her or anything, but it was, like, my favorite thing was to go watch her and all that. And, hmm. you know, my dad was, at that time, my dad was still into um, doing fish keeping and whatnot. Um, and my, his name is Skip, so Skip would always give him, like, a little discount. So, like, whenever we would go there, I'd always, like, he, to get new fish, because for some reason, you know, Every once in a while, the fish would start dying, mm -hmm. except for the very few. Um, and then I would want to go along because I wanted to play with the puppies. And they had the puppy playroom, and it was so much fun. And I remember a few times I had the designer dogs, and I, um, like, they hate to have, like, the designer puppies because I always wanted the small dogs. I don't know why. Little white fluffy dogs. Yes. There was a little white fluffy dog I really wanted and I carried it around the store and I was begging my dad, begging my dad and saying there was a little black one like that. And I'm like begging and begging and begging. Yeah, it didn't happen, obviously. But unfortunately, once the economy tanked, that was when it kind of went down because people weren't... A lot of the mom and pop businesses had a hard time yeah, getting through that. so... But it was fun. I think they still raise birds by hand sometimes. I don't know, though. But they enjoyed it, and it's got some fond memories of it, and it was good. Okay. And that brings us to, when we started dating, I had a dog, mm -hmm. Rocky, who we've talked about before on other shows. Uh, it was my first dog. I remember doing the whole thing of, like, petitioning, or a PowerPoint to convince my dad that we should get a dog, because my brother had a dog, and then he had moved out, so I was... An, only one living in... Not only one living in... Uh, I was the last child left in the house. We just had the cats. Which I've had my whole life growing up, which I've talked about before. But wanted a dog. Made this whole thing about how I'll take care of it. How to the right dog and all of this. And finally convinced. And we went. Got him. But you had, your parents had had dogs in the past, too. Yes. We've had... I don't know, like my parents had a dog um, right before my brother was born. And like, till he was, like, young. Um, then we had Gypsy, who was a big black dog, who was well-trained, but kind of a terror. If she, if she got out, she would wreak havoc. Ate squirrels, hurt a dog. We had to send her to the farm, literally, not like the sending a farm like they you always hear about. But, I don't know, She's I know she's no longer alive now, but she, they lived her days, like, on a farm, just being a farm dog, which is good. But, yeah, so I had that. So we've my parents had exposure. I think both my... I don't know, actually, I don't know if my mom had a dog. I know she had cats. Because she had, like, these little, like, little white fluffy cats when she was little. That she has, like, she had pictures with. I don't know if my dad had dogs. They moved around a lot. So I don't know if they actually took the dogs with them. Or, like, had dogs. But, so, but they both were good with pets and stuff. And seeing them now, you know they're pet people. And that's kind of what they instilled in me. But, yeah, so... Rocky I got as a puppy from a shelter. He was like 12 weeks old. So just a little guy. He was a lab husky mix. So he was just this big, fluffy, golden no, color. No, it was a chow. Lab chow mix, sorry. Well, I think some husky. It's like he had that husky ridge that kind of went away as he got older. But he was just a big, fluffy dog with a curly tail. Great dog. He was my first exposure dog. And really when I got to like be hands-on with a pet that like needed me for everything. Because you had cats growing up, but... As long as you clean the litter box and give them food, that's they're kind of self sufficient. And there were inside outside cats, so they would hunt and do all that stuff. Get knocked up. That happens. That's why you should fix your animals, because if you have an inside outside cat, it will get knocked up by another stray. It just happens. But yeah, Rock was a good dog. I had him from basically when I was 16 until uh, about a year after we started dating. Um, dogs his size are, don't usually live as long just because. Uh, there's prone to hip dysplasia, and he had some hip issues as he got a little bit older that we had to give him, um, some, like, the oral steroids for, he didn't like stairs to begin with, and there's just his thing. So, um, so that wasn't really a great thing when he passed, but... 
But his wasn't even like hip. It wasn't like no, he had to it was put to sleep. It was because, well, we think it was this weird, random disease that we actually kind of like just learned about at our vet when we took Max. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the symptoms that they were telling us about for this leptomosis or something um, were similar to what Andrew described, like the symptoms that Rocky had. So now knowing that there's kind of like a there's a chance. There's a, there's like, oh, that could have been something that affected Rocky. It makes me worried, and I'm like, oh, we got to get Max. Like, right. if there's a vaccine for it and we can prevent it, I totally want Max. Right, because do I that. don't think either of us could handle Max going quickly and unexpectedly. I think it would break us. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Especially since, like, I feel bad, but it's like you, you were alone for, like, two weeks before you had Max. Again. Right, it was, yeah, I... Lost Rocky right, right after Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and then by mid December, the opportunity for Max happened, and it was a stray situation. I was still kind of not really grieving, but I was still processing what had happened, how it felt. I said all this dog stuff, and it just seemed like I could. I'm not. Gonna, I'm never gonna be able to replace Rocky, but I can give another dog a life because I have. I have a home. I have everything he would need. It was like he was lost and there was snow and it was just, the opportunity was right and you kind of. I felt bad. I kind of pushed you, but. Cause I, was like, was... I was like, I was like, I was like, I was, I think I, when I was like, I just need to wait maybe in the spring or something. Well, you and... said like after Christmas cause I would, I had mentioned. Oh, like, right. My that mom's was the... friend had found this litter of puppy or like not found, but like, um, she was through a shelter and she saw that there was this. They're like, hey, we're going to be having puppies. They'll be ready on Christmas Eve or, like, after Christmas. So, like, if you want, you can claim one of the puppies and then you can come pick them up one up, like, once they're ready. But they were lab huskies, which the dog that they got from that litter was, like, was, like, 150 pounds now. But, but Andrew, I mean, he was considering it, but then he, his mom, I guess you can tell the rest of the story about how your mom kind of got involved. My mom, my mom, like I've said before, is a, is a teacher. So there's kind of like an inter-teacher, like, email thing where people can, like, post, like, notices, like, oh, we're selling this stuff, like, kind of like garage sale. But, like, this one, someone posted, like, missing, like, a dog I found a stray, looks very underfed, I'm holding him right now, I can't keep him. He has no ID. I like she's taken him to shelters and they don't have any record of him. So just looking for a home for it. So I think on my old old phone I had like the text chain, but like I reached out. And well, you like you texted me. You were like, I oh got this, this. I had the pictures. So yeah, I... and you're like, oh, like I don't know if I should do this. Whatever, whatever. He's like, well. He's like, we were waiting for the pictures. I'm like, okay, you're going to see this dog and, like, then decide. Like, you've got to see what this looks like. You don't want to get, like, this giant dog or this itty-bitty dog. Like, you don't want right. to get one that's not right for right. you. Right, because you never know what a stray dog's demeanor is going to be, though, because I've never seen this dog in person. I have... And it didn't... Like, sometimes the description, even if it's, like, a mutt, you don't really know what you're getting because right. lab boxers... I mean, I even Could looked be- it up online, and I'm like... There's some that do look like Max. There's some that look completely different. Like, there's so many different ones right. that, like, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. So, got the picture. I remember there's a picture of him in, like, the backseat of a car. Mm-hmm. I think we have that picture somewhere. It's probably saved on my computer. Mm-hmm. Or on my email. And his little, like, scared face when they tried to get a close-up. That's the one you sent me. And I was like... Oh my gosh! He's Get like him. six months old. I'm like, you, he needs it. And then Andrew's kind of hemming and hawing, like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. It's like I'm not, it feels like it feels like it's not fair to Rocky to replace him this soon. It feels like I'm just gonna transfer. Like I'm just gonna. It's like when like you losing a pet, get one like the same day. Like no, like nothing happened. That's kind of what I was feeling at the time. I feel like it just wasn't fair. But it's you can't never prepare yourself. So, like, you can't just, like, I've read this and I've said this, like, when you lose a pet, that doesn't mean you should just stop having that type of pet. Like, if you lose a dog, you shouldn't just stop having dogs. You've got to keep giving that love to someone else and you can give someone a better life. Well, and my thing, my whole thing was, like, he he was kind of leaning towards, like, the puppy after Christmas and whatever. And I was like, but this dog, if you don't give it a home, she wanted to give it to the shelter. And I'm like, that, I don't know about that. 
it kind of like made me gu- feel guilty. Like it could, it, it might, get, might get adopted. It could end up not. It's, if it's not going to a no kill, it could maybe not make it. Right, and I was like, those puppies, like those newborn puppies, they're gonna make it. They're gonna have people that'll want them. Like, mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about a home for them. It's these older puppies that sometimes you have to worry about. So I was like, I think I had to put my two cents in, even though I was only dating him for a year. I was like. I think if you're going to go with a new dog, I think you should go with this one because it needs a home. It's more desperate for a home than those little puppies are. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the name you wanted to name Max? (laughs) I know. I wanted Stanley, but he, now looking at him, I was like, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. Max ended up working. I know Max is about the most, like the, probably the third most common Mm. dog name after Buddy. Probably Spot. I don't know. But yeah, Max is a really common name. But he did look a little like the dog from... Your mom made a good point. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, I, I get that. And it fit. And I remember going to get him. He was like, left work. It was kind of the way I was over by like the Y, which was like a mile from my where I worked. And it wasn't even like, a, oh, here you go. He's like, all right, here's your dog. All right, see you later. And I was just like, put him in my back seat. And he immediately went from the back seat to the front seat. And I was like, well, this is how it's going to be. And, mm. yeah, it was... I couldn't have picked a better dog. Mm-hmm. Like... I remember I even drew... So, it was during my finals, I think, was when you got them. Because I, like, left my Friday... I didn't have any finals, right, I think, after, until Monday. Right. And so, I left my Friday final. I'm in, like, a snowstorm. But I was like, I need to come and be there the first night this dog is here. Whatever. And drove, like, the normal... It, take, it took... From college to his house is usually about an hour, an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. It took me three hours to get there Mm -hmm. in the snowstorm. So I was very determined to get there, and it was worth it. He was a cutie. Red meat, we crave sustenance. Guys, we are not invading my aunt. So Andrew and I went to Dave & Buster's for one of my days for spring break, and we happen upon this game that's called Any Way You Slice It, a Golden Girls game. And so pretty much the object of the game is it's like a it's a trivia game pretty much with Golden Girls and whoever gets the gets to four cheesecakes wins. <laughs> and we have a couple different categories. We've got dating and we have a die to decide what we go with. Okay. So we've got D for dating. W is for who wore it. So it's like there's a question mark on the person's face. This is already the best yeah. game. And so wow. you have to like cover up their name and you look at it and be like, who wore this? This is great for podcast content. <laughs> yes. um, we'll just, I'll describe it as yeah. you guys are discussing. Right. And then we've got T for den- like general trivia. And then meme, which I don't know how that's going to work. I think they, you just say the quote and then they have to guess, they who, have to it. guess who it is. Okay. It the and old then the we've got... Um, We've got steel questions, too. And then, what's another one? So the question mark is who wore it. There's wild, which then you get to pick what category we do. And then we have two, which means double cheesecake. And double we, cheesecake. Yeah, and we get to Ooh. pick. We pick the category, and whoever gets there first gets double cheesecake. Oh, sure. And whoever gets to four wins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's our Night Night show. It's well, show. it is one of the most genuinely funny things that has ever been on tv i agree oh my gosh uh Mm -hmm. and even more so after i learned that it's all uh live that they tape them live that's and that they're uh you know improvising a lot of it in in front of a live studio audience yeah so they don't like the humor that they have is has to be genuine they have to be funny in the moment and actually make people laugh it's not the whole laugh track uh Mm, it definitely doesn't predate it. That's, but I feel like the laugh like track. But, but I feel like it's not. They didn't use, need to use it as heavily as some of the newer, no, right? Because it was all games. live and whatnot. Yeah, and they were actually funny. That's yeah, that's, yeah, my that's point the point in all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golden Girls is a great show. I yes. love it. Sometimes <laughs> I made a post about this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, but sometimes Golden Girls gets like really heavy and dark oh, yeah. out of mm-hmm. like nowhere. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, the left I turn. Those, like, the friends like, I'm, I'm going. I'm, they're, I'm going to be killed. I was like, she's like, like I'm dying. Like yeah, there's like one episode specifically I was watching, 
And it was adorable. They were trying to sing to a little baby to try to get it to go to sleep. And they were singing like three-part harmony, Mr. Sandman. Like that. that was so oh, funny. That. Like, it was yeah. great. But then while that was happening, Sophia was out to dinner with one of her old lady friends. And her, her, her old lady friend was like, I want you to help me kill myself. And it's like, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one episode I got drawn into was, oh, um, it was also Sophia. It was, uh, she had her friend uh, from the beach. Like the, oh, the, the, pier, the guy the, the that had all oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, that was And I was like, mm-hmm. she kept coming, and then one day he just mm-hmm. didn't come back. And I was like, yeah. oh. Yeah, and then his daughter came and explained to her what had happened. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was super fucking sad. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, that show was able to definitely bridge the gap between humor and seriousness of people of that age and what mm-hmm. they had to go through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a cool show because it it was one it was the first show about old ladies and real old lady problems and issues yeah. and mm-hmm. things to think about like I'm what glad. happens when your husband dies and you, you've been a homemaker for fifty years, you know. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they treat it with humor and like mm-hmm. respect, you know, I feel right. a, a great amount of respect for those issues that they right. tackle right. in right. that show. And that's uh, mm-hmm. that's why you just watch it and you just kind of go, mm-hmm. Kind yeah, of like, uh, they're very strong role models. Yeah. I I like that. Uh, there was an episode of uh, Teen Titans Go that I was watching with my kid, and he Cyborg used the Green Lantern's ring to summon like the strongest power, and it was uh, the Golden Girls. Mm. He summoned the Golden Girls to come uh, and fight. There the, you go. The, the uh, I'm really glad that, I'm really <laughs> oh, glad that yeah. reboot they were trying to make fell through. That would have been awful. You can't redo that. What? That's, no, they were, they you were, can't. Time make, and a place. Wasn't it like they were, were, were going to make it guys though? They were gonna make it, Older gay gentleman was gonna be called Silver Foxes, and I'm really glad that fell through. Oh my oh. god! I think it would have really? been good. I think it would have been totally different. And great. Actually, that name mm. is perfect. Yeah, like I Silver think that concept Foxes. is good. I, don't, I think that you like take away the idea that it has anything to do with Golden Girls because it doesn't. It's just it's it would be its own show. Right, it would be the they equivalent. They didn't call it a reboot of. Yes, then it probably would have been like if they made a show, but like because they did that show. I know there's a show that was like last TV season with um bunch of older actors and it's like a retirement home community like that wasn't it called the neighborhood or something yeah or it's like um, I don't remember. the cool kids or something oh the cool kids yeah Did which is a different concept but yeah but anyway the we're silver, playing a game the silver foxes silver foxes. i'd watch it if it was called like you know santa Fe's or something <laughs> referencing that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've been laughing a lot about uh men in the, and their their life's journey that parallels santa claus yeah, what? like you know, yeah. when you're a little boy, you get presents from Santa, and then when you get married and have kids, you're Santa, and then when you get older, you grow a beard and you look like Santa, yeah. then you just are Santa. Yeah, <laughs> and there's all true. level of attraction and you know things happening. Oh yeah, you know. yeah. Santa Kitch is is a no Santa. Ooh, King. Can't, Santa, Santa Kink. Kink. <laughs> Santa Kink is real. We've already discussed women. that here, right? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Much. I don't think we discussed that around the holidays, did didn't we? Maybe, maybe we did. I think Santa. we did. I feel Santa like Santa during Halloween would be hilarious. <laughs> That's genius. Just be young Santa, just just <laughs> clean shaven Santa, just dark beard, just full dark beard. I don't think trust again to bring your presents made like a dark beard, just red coat. Like <laughs> I don't know what he's gonna do to me. <laughs> ho ho ho! Merry Halloween. What did you say? <laughs> what is Merry Halloween? Yeah. Merry Halloween. Okay, Anyways. so this is a Golden Girls game. Yeah. Yeah. So, and back to Liz. Yeah, so yeah, the oldest Liz. person gets to start. <laughs> the Aww. oldest person? The oldest person. Aww. I think it's Sarah. Aww. Great. Okay, so. Do it. I hope Great. I gray gracefully. <laughs> you will. I'm, I'm sure I'm already you will. pulling them out of my head. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Don't worry. I got them. <laughs> it's happening. Okay, I got to oh, roll and this. So, what I yeah, do? so you roll it, and oh, then you will pick whatever card... It lands on. So D. D. So you pick a dating one. D for oh, dating. I thought it was going to be oh, D for Dorothy. Dorothy. No. Dorothy. 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 But doesn't have the answer on the card? I yeah, but she reads it. She doesn't answer. Oh. You guys okay, are so Okay, so we have this card over. So yeah, right? so you read it. I You're not included. Oh, okay. And then I just ask You read the question, question and then it. we put our token oh. on who we think it is. Oh. 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 And then this. And then if we get a steal question... Then it's whoever puts it first. So you can, like, if we all guess Rose and it's right, we all get a cheesecake. Uh, okay. But during a steal round, it has to be the first person to pick Rose. Are we in a steal it. round right now? I don't know. Somebody She'll. Score? It'll, no, be it'll be with the cheesecakes. Cheesecake. We have cheesecakes. You get a cheesecake oh, every those time. Are actual chips. 
everybody yes. there's like cheesecake it's chips. just got cards and one dice and like little little tokens. player little Token. tokens yeah little cardboard tokens four. since okay. we're on the player radio two. oh you know what we should do <laughs> we should probably what? describe what's happening a little do you bit. want do you guys want me to just be the permanent ant the question reader so you guys can play oh since, yeah that would be a good idea I, i'm not going to be playing i don't have there's only a, it's only a four yeah he doesn't game. know the golden girls so i can just ask the questions and that yeah way that works and then everybody's want to do that or? oh well i've already i already read this card oh, so let's so do this one you can go from there sure sure yeah Okay, go ahead. All right, the matriarch begins, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that was a par- terrible joke. Which girl's husband fathered an illegitimate son? <laughs> I don't know who did that first, but... That's okay, because it's not a steel question. Okay, everybody yeah. has answered? Yeah. yeah. Um, the answer is Blanche. Blanche yeah. Devereaux. Blanche Devereaux. I want the strawberry Salacious. cheese. Salacious. That was an easy one. Oh, Salacious. I want the strawberry cheese cake. I don't know it's where this. Oh, the bottom. They have. Oh, oh, you already looked through these. Ha ha. Oh, to the cheesecakes. What's wrong with that? All right. All right. So then take your cards back and Who's then the next roller. So then it goes to the left. Okay. Take so it back now, y'all. It. I got T for general trivia. All right. So you're going to be the announcer, Nathaniel. Yes. Okay, you guys ready? It's okay. To if it's yeah. not, as long as oh, yeah. it's not a steel yeah. question, you don't have to worry about it. It is not a steel question. Here is the question. Interesting verbiage here. Who allowed one of the girls to borrow her car, then reported it stolen? Who allowed one of the girls to borrow her car and then reported it stolen? All right. The answer is Blanche. Oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think Rose. Sophia no. stole Rose's Sophia car stole once. Rose's that's what card, I remembered, yeah. and that's why I switched my thing to, to Blanche. Thank oh, you. you my cheesecake. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, so then I'll, just, I'll just put it on the bottom. What? Something on the table. Okay, so. Oh, it's his Andrew, you get to roll the dice. What'd you get? So you got trivia. Here, sir. Mm-hmm. I'm reading another card, yeah? Okay. While each actress eventually won an Emmy for her role, which won their Emmy first? You guys are all in, and no one gets a point. I bet it was Who her. Who was it? Betty oh, White. Really? Oh, yeah, because she was on, like, Mary Tyler. Oh. She was on all sorts of shows. I was thinking this for this show, but... Well, it, it was for this show. Or, oh, uh, maybe not. D, it's your role. All right, your turn. <laughs> D for Dayton. Da, 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 Dayton, Ohio. Okay, there you go. We still haven't gotten a, a meme or who wore it. No. no. Who dated snazzy dresser Murray Gutman? Who dated uh, the snazzy uh, dresser six. Murray Gutman? I'm, I'm going with Blanche. And the winner is Sarah with Sophia. <laughs> Ding! Um, Murray Good Gutman, job. older gentleman Murray Gutman, mm-hmm. and then whoever gets to four wins. There you go, sir. To four cheesecakes. Four cheesecakes. Four okay. Cheesecakes. I've got two. Oh, this is a quick game. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Great. I mean, you could probably. It's a perfect old game. Old people. This is for old people. This is for old people. This is for old people. I'm so pleased. I like that it's four <laughs> cheesecakes, one for each of the golden Simple, girls. Simple, straight mm-hmm. to the point. Two. Oh, so that's double cheesecake. So you get to pick the category. Ooh. and going to be the winner. Win. Cheesecake. Or double well, cheesecake. Player three. You can what win right now. What haven't we done yet? I want to see what this Are you player three? Yeah. Oh. My bad. The meme or who wore it is I the wanna one. See, I want to see what the meme is all about. Okay, so let me pull the second one because I think I saw the first one. So he reads the quote and we have to see who, who said that quote. <laughs> Good thing, yeah, because the picture gives it away too. Well, yeah. For that person. Uh, okay. And this isn't a steal, right? No, this is a double cheesecake. A double so. cheesecake. Right. Okay. I know I told you where babies come from, but did I ever mention where they come out? This one's a tricky one. Let me think about this. I know I told you where babies come from. But did I ever mention where they come out? 
Now ahead. let me do it in the character's voice. Oh no! I know I told you where babies oh, come damn. from, but did I ever mention where they come out? We oh, missed it. Blanche. None of us picked Blanche. That would have been a game winner. I know. Yeah. That was that my been gut been instinct. I was gonna. Mm-hmm. It was, I think it was man. Me. I, I almost did it in her voice, and I was like, "No, it'll give it away." I, can't, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be able to say a word. I in do that I, I didn't mm-hmm. know if it was gonna be like the left swerve, you know, or if it was gonna be the actual mom. I think it was. I was thinking. Liz is rolled. All right. Let's see. Ooh. D for dating. Another Cheesecake dating stopped the die. Mm-hmm. Don't they always? Mm-hmm. Uh, which golden girl wanted to have a fling with the gardener, Mr. Mitsumo? <laughs> which golden girl wanted to have a fling with the gardener, Mr. Mitsumo? Mm-hmm. Who picked Sophia? We're getting... A cheesecake. Yeah, that's me, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. I was trying to think. I of, remember that I one. That was a sweet episode. I was trying to think episode. of who dated. Like there weren't very many Asian men on that show, so yeah, I was trying to Sophia. think of who dated Asian men, and it he was, was Sophia. He was just there as the gardener first, and then like she invites him in, and they like hang out and or some have, shit. Yeah, yeah, they like have Chinese or Japanese yeah. food and have sushi, yeah. and she yes. just throws it in her purse because she doesn't want another to eat it. dating. <laughs> one. Oh yeah, I remember that now. Sophia. Which golden girl dated college professor Miles Weber? <laughs> Look, everyone did that. Everyone it. has I selected the. Oh, I got four. I win. Oh, yay! Nice. Oh. Oh. I win. Rock I win. I, you are I the, the winner. Girl. Your sister Sandy would be so proud. I wish I had a tiara for you. Do we want to play for third or f- and second or no? Oh, no, it's fine. That's that's fine. That was fun. I enjoyed that. I want to look at the who wore it deck for a yeah. second. Did we it not even do any of that? We didn't do no. any of them. It's just literally like they have a question mark over their head and you like cover up their name on the card and, show and, and then show everybody and you have to guess. Some of them are okay, hard. Okay, how about like, this I was, one? I'm going to do just one. A few. This one is a voluptuous lady with a red dress. The Ooh, that's hard. It's Stan. <laughs> it's Stan. Oh my God! It is, uh, Stan's on, the let me worst. Look at the hands here, real quick. Oh, it's Dorothy. No, uh, you wrong. It's Sophia. Oh, is it? Yeah, I was yeah, thinking either Sophia. Sophia or... Is it weird of she me borrowed that... her dress? Wasn't it? Adorable. Is yeah, it I think w- she borrowed one of Blanche's dresses. I think it's weird that of me sense. that I was hoping that the face would reveal from the card, but it's not a. It's not a screen. It's just a picture. Oh yeah, it's just an actual card. <laughs> I was like, where's the reveal of the face? I want to see what the full picture looks like. Well, that was fun. Thanks picture for bringing it. that. Sicily. I liked it. Picture of Sicily, 1922. <laughs> That's the best picture line. Picture it. And if the date cheat, shady pines, ma. Shady pines. <laughs> uh, what a lovely show. We're gonna We're fuck gonna the sodomites in, in the. In the- Well, there is into. there is a mini fridge right in front of you. All right, Ooh. I'm going to tinkle, <laughs> and then we will dive out of the tinkle time. The king chair. We're, we're so we're exiting game of king chair. We are now entering podcast fee territory. <laughs> so uh, no more spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we probably might bring up spoilers. Oh shit! Uh, how you been, Zach? It's been a minute it's since I've seen good. you. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just been working a lot. And- what? Can I still pee back here? Yeah, you can still pee back there. <laughs> oh, I was about to say. No, I've been working a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah same. Just working, eat, sleep, repeat. I've been working a lot of weird hours too, so Yeah. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. What about you? Uh I've been good. Staying busy. I've been staying really busy. Work, parenthood. Yes. Been watching the kids a lot. You know. You? Supporting the wife and her career. You know, it's uh she she got a new job. She's Doing that whole dialysis tech thing, getting up at three in the freaking morning, you know? Jeez. Like she's a trooper. She's a she's a true trooper. Yeah, that's rough. And uh, kudos to her for doing that, cause fuck if I could do that. Yeah, man, I know the feeling. Sometimes I have to wake up at three to be at my work by four. Sometimes, and that's mm-hmm. those days are. I mean, rough. don't get me wrong. I've been getting up at four a.m. Uh, either to take the kids to their babysitter or to get up and go to the gym. Sure. Like it. That's now my internal clock is to wake up at four, which 
really is not. It's not bad, though. It's not a fun internal clock on days yeah. that you have off. <laughs> you got to make sure you get, like, an hour nap in, maybe a two-hour yeah. nap in, and then yeah. you're right as rain. I took about a maybe half-hour, 45-minute nap before you guys got here. Was, yeah. I woke up extremely groggy. That was not fun. Oof. Uh, I got to say, speaking of you working a lot, uh, I love McDonald's now. <laughs> I don't know if I if – I, Don't. Don't. Well, the thing is, I am in love with their uh, quarter pounder. Because that's pretty- that, that's a solid piece of beef. Oh, it's solid. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just, solid. It's just, it's just, I, uh, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I can't. Oh, I, I bet you know, and, and I, I, everyone told me like, oh, uh, or everyone always tells me if they work in an area of food that like they just they can't eat there anymore, and I'm like. I worked at Monocles and I ate there every single fucking day. I will eat there, eat the food occasionally just because it's free. Yes. I think that's what kept me motivated to keep eating it. Was a, it was just. But it's usually one of those I things. I should have paid for it, but I didn't. It's one of those <laughs> things where I'm eating half of it. I'm just like, this is garbage. And I throw it away. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I went dumpster diving today at work. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I was throwing something in the dumpster we have outside of our area. And as I, as I threw it down there, I, I noticed there, there was nothing in it, but I look and there's a, a, a full bottle of Dasani and then two full bottles of Sunkist. And I'm like, what? And they looked, com- they, they were completely full, looked on open. I'm like, what is going on down there? So of course I, I, I walk down the stairs. This is one of those, like, I barely, I walk like three steps down the stairs, throw it over the edge into the dumpster and walk back up. But I noticed this. So I ran down, look in, I'm like, those are, those are full, unopened <laughs> sun kiss. That's free fucking soda. <laughs> so I dived in, got them. It, it was one of those cases where like, I couldn't tell if they were like expired or whatever, which popped. Okay, if it's expired, who gives a shit? Starting, right. to, starting to question your uh, But your they, had, they, had, they had dents in the bottle. Like, and it, that's, so that's uh, damaged goods, technically. You can't sell uh, that. Uh, so like, uh, that's, and, like, you always see the... The labels, if if seal is broken or bottle is damaged, do not consume. That's just saving their ass from a lawsuit. Right. I mean, there's probably nothing wrong with it, but it's just just in case. Uh, so I was like, whatever, I'm taking these. <laughs> so that's that's my fun story from the day. Huh. <laughs> I dumpster See. dive for Sunkist. Wonderful. <laughs> I guess there's worse things you could be dumpster diving for. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, I, I'm. I've a meal. All, you know, I've always wanted to go dumpster diving on campus during this time of year. Because well, this, this is when all of the like rich Asian students are going home yep. for the summer. That's true. They're throwing shit away. And they just throw their expensive shit that their parents paid for away. Because who fucking cares? Like, I wish they would just throw out their expensive cars. <laughs> it's been known. To, yeah, because, yeah, they'll... To just abandon them somewhere. Really? Yes. Shit. It's not unheard of. It's Expl- not happening. Explain right. that to the 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 BMV like where like I just found this car. I want to title it. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. That's the, so it's just such a waste of a car. Yeah, until Absolutely. it gets impounded and then auctioned off or something. Yeah. You have to buy it from the auction. Wild. But that's also how you get a thirty thousand dollar car for like what eight thousand. Oh yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> thirty thousand. You went cheap for Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're they're they, driving fucking Maseratis, yeah, and all yeah. kinds of shit over GTRs, there. GTRs apparently. I've seen Dude, like there's all one sorts or of two. wonderful cars being mm-hmm. driven over there. Mm-hmm. Saw a Lamborghini on campus the other day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not much of a car guy, but like, goddamn, and again, a lot of Audis too. And like BMWs. I, said, I I really just want to do it just because I wonder what kind of little treasures I can find, like tech treasures and shit. Because I'm, yeah. like, what can I find over here? And of course, like, I know I'm not gonna, like, what I really want is music gear, but I know I'm not gonna find any of that because the real music people will just keep it. Yeah, of yeah. course. Because <laughs> right. the music people are like, no, I, this is good. This is gonna sound weird, but I consider them, like, real people. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're, they're, they're not, not gonna be rich f- people. They're not frivolous with their shit. Yeah. There's uh, the word. Uh, frivolous. They're not real people. They're not real people. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they're subhuman. That's no, no, no. God damn. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's not what we're saying at all. Frivolous was the oh, word. Oh, oh, oh. They're frivolous. 
Ooh, a stacky boy? Ooh. Y'all can share that if you want. Ooh. You gonna hide them Phoenix tears? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the Phoenix tears. I'll share a can of that. What do we? What do we? What do you want, Zach? I haven't had the Phoenix tears, so. Uh... That's a, it's an ass whooper. Is it? If we split it between the three of us, it will still be an ass whooper. That's okay. It's it's a heavy boy. It's like eleven percent. Oh my god! Yeah. Good. Yeah, it was oh, the the yeah. Phoenix tears. Spread oh, oh, Fuck yeah, spread it. <laughs> In the words of Tyler McLaughlin. Whom I miss very dearly. I don't think I've seen him since Fun for Funs. What? Yeah, uh, he's he's had to skip out on a couple shows. Like last week, he had a really bad migraine. Um, that sucks. This week, he's working night shift. Next week, he's working night shift. No. Uh, I don't think I'm going to see him until LaFiCon. Dang. Which I am very excited for LaFiCon. Me too. I, I'm super excited for LaFiCon. We got a lot of uh, – the Journey into Comics Network has a lot of goodies that we're going to be handing out, like stickers and stuff. Uh, I I've gotten some bumper stickers and static clings. Static clings. Static uh, some, clings. Something I was very unfamiliar with until I saw it. Um, they're just basically stickers that don't actually you don't peel off or stick or anything. You just stick it to your window and they just stay there. It statically clings. And you can take it off at any point and put it on something else. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, thank Peels you. Right off. Thank you. Thank you. I am eager to see what this tastes like because it's been sitting in my fridge for a while. It smells delicious. I'm definitely going to keep one or all of these cans. Keep some back. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. It tastes mm-hmm. just as good as at when I tried it at 450. Oh, my God. That aged very well. When My was goodness. That? That, was, that was that was 2018. Yeah, it was at least. It's, it's, oh, so wow. it's been at least four or five months. I've never had this either. Huh. This is this is really good stuff. I'm, I, I'm really glad I'm sharing this can. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's, I remember it's I was like, this tastes excellent, but it tastes heavy. It has an extremely heavy feel to it. Oh, yes. Uh. And it's just wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an oh, yeah. for an IPA, it's an ass kicker. <laughs> it's, an ass kicker. <laughs> it's it's an ass kicker. Um, jumping topics. Okay, so no, well, no. Let's talk about let's let's type up some LaFiCon. Yes. So you got an after show. Yes, we got another. Let's talk about that after show. After party's gonna be fucking awesome. Night of the rounds coming again. Classic after yes. show. Classic. Classic. Great. Nobody was surprised by that <laughs> announcement. But everyone uh, but was excited. Every, yes, absolutely. But everyone was po- po- yeah, really fucking excited to hear it because they just get better every time. They're, uh, as they say, a fan favorite. They're bringing their full video production this time. Mm. So, pretty yeah. excited about that. That's and great. We've got the uh, Tony Hawk Super Group Extravaganza premiere. Do talk about that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're just like the excitement goes completely monotone. Yeah, talk about it. Uh, the sluts are doing songs specifically from the Tony Hawk Pro Skater soundtracks. Nice. It's, That'd be fun. It's funny that like this is the second week in a row that Tony Hawk Pro Skaters got brought up on this show. Because Keegan was here last week, and that's all that's all we talked. We talked about how um Movies. Well, the the whole topic was again was movies need to end. <laughs> and they're like, at some point, I think it was Star Wars. Everything got fucked up because we did we did Star Wars one, two, and three. But then they were then out of nowhere they were like four, five, and six. And then we're gonna do one, two, and three. <laughs> and, <laughs> and now people expect that. So we got Tony Hawk Pro Skater one, two, three, underground. <laughs> it's like one underground one, two, three. Yeah, Tony Hawk. Fucking real American helicopter <laughs> derby. <laughs> one, two, three. I love Tony Hawk Underground. The underground ones are good, but oh. there were more. Oh, there's two. No, I'm saying there's. Oh. There, he's done like it never stopped. It just changed name. I was mm-hmm. never a terribly huge fan of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Really? You can keep your mouth shut, then. Yeah, he did. He I did like not. Tony Hawk American Wasteland or something. Yeah, like yep. That. The Wasteland. I didn't say they were bad. I, didn't say I, I didn't never played that for... one. I played I all. To be honest, I only played Thug One and Two. How to have and speaking of, 
what an awesome like shortening of the name. Tony Hawk's Underground Thug. I love the way you threw it out so nonchalantly too. <laughs> I was like, I I thought for I'd say three fourths to one whole second, I'm like Thug. Ah, Tony and Hawk. And for a second, you were like, <laughs> wow, he is cool. Wow. <laughs> cool with a K-E-W-L. Ew. Fuck. That is so cool. cool. Uh, that, that's going to be interesting to hear Robbie singing those He's songs. an excellent vocalist. He's an He's, excellent front man. He is. <laughs> Both. I think it'll be fun. I want to get on stage. He's a fun front man. The, uh, I like Robbie. Yeah. That Goldfinger song. You know the Goldfinger song? I don't know the Goldfinger song. So, again, I, I never played Pro Skater. You'll know. You'll hear it. You'll know. But, uh, yeah, and then I believe I might have a guy doing an 8-bit uh, disco kind of... That'd be cool. Um, yeah. That'd be really cool. Set. If we could get Colby back here. I know. I miss Colby. Cool. I don't think I've seen him for two years now. I saw him in January. Magfest, at Mag lucky. Fest. It was lucky. wonderful. I bet. I miss Colby. Me Very too. Dearly. He's a good guy. Come back, Colby. Come back, Colby. Come back. I know you don't watch Baby, the show that back. you did an intro song for, but come back. Oh. <laughs> Please come back. <laughs> I miss. I, I seriously miss Colby. He, I sincerely he was miss Colby. I one of to... my favorite people to hang out with. We need to find an excuse to go out and visit him. Honestly, yeah. I don't think that we'd have to create an excuse. Look up some breweries. No, that's the obvious one. I think it'll be a show. I think I'll pick the right show and say, okay, is, fuck is it. Isn't it like the West Coast in that area, like the mecca of craft brew? There's a lot of good, a lot of really good stuff out there. I dig that. But I got to find someone. I guess I can just go by myself and say, fuck it. Have you ever gone on a solo adventure? Uh, The only real solo adventure I went on was to Bloomington. And at that time, that was the longest drive I had ever made. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I went to see my, my buddies in Across the Sun. They were on a U.S. tour. And so I was. Uh, they played at a place called The Bishop. The Bishop. And, uh, yeah, I went down there and uh, watched them play, hung out with them. It was a fun night. I ended up – at the end of the night, I ended up missing my uh, – so I took the 231 route down there. Mm -hmm. And so I missed my, tur my turn to get on to 231. Ooh. Ended up half an hour away from Kentucky uh, and then turned around because I had decided I had gone too far. <laughs> I was like, I am lost. Oh. I was really trying to make it to find a, a turn to go to Terre Haute because I had friends in Terre Haute at mm -hmm. uh, ISU. And I was like, I can just stay the night there. I can find – I can try to crash there and just go home in the morning because it's really late. But I just said, fuck it, turned around, found my turn, and went home. <laughs> Damn. Hmm. The drive home was much better than the drive there because at 2 in the morning, there's nobody on the road. Yeah. At – Two in the afternoon, there's a lot of people on the road, and it's really hard to pass on that road. And there's yeah. a lot of towns you go I through. I imagine. I joined a band with my buddy, who's our guitar player now, Steve, called Beauty and the Beheaded. <clears throat> we played a bunch of shitty hardcore shows. That's all it was. Super appropriate yeah. name for the time. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> what, what year would you say that was? Um, like 2008. Eight. Okay, so that, I was going to say that was... I don't remember that name. Yeah, I don't remember that that was like right one. after I fell out of the scene for yeah. a little while. Yeah. Yeah, Beauty and Beheaded. I was like... I played a show at the Mirror with them, which was crazy. I don't know how yeah. that happened. I like what, it was an Alton show. Where? Oh, an Alton show. Yeah. Oh, Who's yeah. Alton? Out and John? No, no, one of those. Oh, oh. Yeah, a uh, land promoter. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we can trash him all we want. Yeah, he, he won't hear this. Fuck you! Yeah, fuck you. The rumor started that he died. <laughs> what? The, you mean the rumor that he started that he died? No, he faked his death on Facebook. What? That sounds about right. What yeah. a douche. <laughs> He's a piece oh of shit. Oh my god. Anyway, what a Elton, you're a piece of shit. Dude, I went through a window <laughs> at one of his shows, and he was like, "Yo, you guys got to pay for this window, or you can't play here again." So. See you never. Steve was like, Steve was like, oh shit, we gotta play here because this is where all the shows are. And so Steve sold his guitar, <gasps> and the dude and Elton was like, nah, you guys can't play. <gasps> dude, 
Dirty. Dirty. Motherfucker. Dirty motherfucker. Fuck you, dude. Ask Steve so, about that next time I practice, dude. It was shitty. I wonder what person from that scene or the scene back in the day he doesn't owe money to. Well, and it's not just the scene either. He owes money to like Traveling touring bands, acts. Yeah. I think he, he owes Puddle he, of Mud no, a bunch shit. of money. He famously, he famously <laughs> ripped off Puddle of Mud. He famously well, ripped I mean, off ICP. Of yeah. He famously ripped off. Uh, I think. Well, he. I don't know if he ripped off the Ataris, but when we played with the Ataris. They had signed a deal with Elton saying that there was only going to be like two local I bands. That. And that he when, booked like yeah, six. But I think that's yeah. right when Elton like left that place. Yeah, that was I think Elton's last yeah. show at Big Shots. Was that was show. really brave to rip off ICP. Right, I mean, like the Juggalo right? clan. Like <laughs> they could have really come after. Yo, they will pour right. Fago all over you. <laughs> right? You don't want that. They mess. will wreck your uh, shit. What band were you in after? You yes, I had it. Um, yes. I was in the Vomato for a little bit with Joe, and then um, oh no, before that I started another band with Steve. Called uh, DeLorean. Mm. Who played? Y'all's MySpace layout. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was it was sick. MySpace. It was basically Under Oath, Emery, and shit like that that we played. And um, played two shows: one in Chicago, and then one some local shit. Yeah, yeah. One of two some shows: Chicago. Shit. No big deal. Yeah, it was an apartment show. Oh, it was okay. for Breeze Brothers going away party. Breeze nuts. <laughs> so, hey, old Breezy. Yeah. And then after that, I didn't do anything for a long time. Um, then I started still. Or I didn't start still. As I was in still lives with Steve and Jack and Josh, we started to get by. And then when Steve left that, we oh, started Josh. to get by. And then now Josh is gone, and now Steve is. Now in. <laughs> if that's hard to follow, I'm sorry. No, actually, rewind and take I mean, notes. I mean, I know it, so yeah. I was gonna yeah. say we're we're, like, I know we're the very history. familiar. So, yeah. but okay. Uh, what were you in? I well, <laughs> in high school, I All was in. Names? I was in a band called Stage Fright for a couple of years. With a y. Wait, but spell it. S T A G E. Yeah. F R Y T E. Yeah. One word. <laughs> Stage Fright. Yes. Ooh, uh, no, well, kind of. Oh, how? That's we oh, played, kind of. the way he did his so hair. We played, kind of that. We played too. a show at uh, we played a show at Club X in Lowell. Oh which, my god, was I forgot like, about there Club was, X. It was like this teen <laughs> dance club that on on Saturdays they would throw shows. Which actually, there's some pretty sick metal shows there back yeah, in the there day. There were good shows there. That was like where I saw Systematic Hate probably like oh a thousand god. times. Is and, that Colbos? <laughs> Yes, Colobos, yeah. Arnolfini Marriage, whatever you want all to call the them, all Revolting Vision, they're all the same band. Um, I saw <laughs> I saw Vision. Wilkes Booth there. Oh my god. Wilkes Booth was like this new metal ass band like with six members and like a synth player and a fucking crazy. Sounds tight. They were amazing. Amazing. I oh, forgot amazing. about um, them. But so <laughs> Wilkes Booth was the best, man. That, I don't think they lasted Clearly. very long, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's a cool <laughs> name. It if was a cool name. And it was spelled with an X, too. Oh, yeah. W I L X. If it was spelled normally, I would assume they sound like the Chariot. Okay. Ooh. No, they didn't sound anything like the Chariot. No. <laughs> <laughs> they sounded kind of like 5.0. Do you remember 5.0? Which actually was also a semi local band. They were from, like, uh, Juliet, I think. I've never heard of that. Oh, look up 5.0. They, they really I'm sure they're not <laughs> anywhere on the internet. <laughs> no, I promise you they are. You can find them on Spotify still. They released an album through Roadrunner, and they were really the yeah their debut album was actually super super solid. It's it's it still stands up as a really good like new metal album of the early two thousands. But uh, anyway, so Stage Fright, we played at Club X, and uh, we had black lights and strobe lights that we brought with us. So you can see all your cum spots course. and shit. And, and we used uh, we used, we found out that laundry soap glows under a black light, so we used laundry soap to paint our faces like. So it Almost like, like you had cum all over your faces. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, when you guys sweat and shit, didn't it burn like hell? I, I well, I didn't use that much. I just like drew a couple lines and dots and stuff. Tim like took coat oh his, his hands and like just rubbed it all over his face. So his f entire <laughs> face glowed. I bet, I bet <laughs> it was kind of sick. It, I thought it looked cool, I, but I was I, also I, a freshman in high school. So sure, I'm dumb. But, nah, yeah. not but I'm not. Y'all can do it. But yeah, so stage fright lasted a couple of years. And then Stage Fright broke up. That's when I started Slaughterhouse Cruelty. Uh, Slaughterhouse Cruelty lasted a couple of years. Actually, no, probably about a year and a half, maybe. And then uh, started Burnt by Compassion, which was like my hardcore, metalcore, just... We sucked. You know what? That we, sounds like a <laughs> super Christian band. No, not, not at, at all. all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, we... 
we were really bad, but we were really good at promoting, and we put on a really good live show. Even though our music was terrible, we were fun to watch, if nothing else. So we actually had a... Out of all the bands I've been in, that one probably had one of the biggest followings. Just We had kids that followed us to every show we played, and we played... That summer that I was in that band, we played like every weekend, probably twice a weekend most of the summer, and it was that? great. Yeah, man. Aww. That was back when there was Those tons of places to play, days. and and we didn't have so many lives. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we just we, and then after an after Burnt by Compassion yeah. kind of fizzled <laughs> out, uh, we started. Uh, well, what would become Police vs. the Japanese Mafia. <laughs> but before we were Police vs. the Japanese Mafia, we called ourselves Drop Dead Gorgeous. I remember that. Oh, and, then, yep. and then, like, the Drop Dead Gorgeous started getting Y'all big. Had a comma? Or did they have a comma? They had a comma. Oh, we okay. were just one word. Well, not one word. We were... We were three know, words. One three, phrase. three words, one <laughs> phrase. Yes, yeah. not, 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 three words, no. one phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Their hit single. <laughs> but yeah, so we were Drop Dead Gorgeous. And that was back when there was this band from, I don't, I, they were from around here somewhere uh, called The Brigade. Oh, you know, oh God. The Brigade? They were like a hardcore band. And they were sick they, as fuck. I, I don't know if this was player. like, uh, exactly. That's I was just right. going to mention that. They didn't have a bass player and I saw them twice and I was like, holy shit, these guys are so much heavier than anybody else I've ever heard and they don't even have a bassist. So I was like, "Well, fuck it. We'll we'll start a band with no bassist." So when <laughs> when we were dropped dead gorgeous, we we made the decision that we weren't going to play with a bassist, and it, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. And then we got a, we got a bassist, and we were like, "We're going to kind of revamp this." So we were then we 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 switched to Police First to Japanese Mafia, rewrote all our songs, and, and then we got bored with that after a while. So we started writing Deathcore, and we renamed ourselves Axel Foley. And oh we played two Motherfucker. shows. Motherfucker! Oh my <laughs> I god! I remember there was a point when I was in Cutaway Blue, and um, I was really good friends with Mike. Mm-hmm. And he goes, "Hey, let's start like a post-hardcore Cassidy's Burn band." And I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "Let's call it Axel Foley." And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> so fuck y'all, because I had never been happier with a band name in my life well, ever. <laughs> sorry about you, man. You missed out. Sorry about it. it. <laughs> we got it. And we played two shows as Axel Foley, and then. It just wasn't working out the same way. Cause, so our guitarist that had been with me from Burnt by Compassion to Drop Dead Gorgeous to Police vs. the Japanese Mafia, he hated the deathcore stuff. So as soon as we started doing that, we added a third guitarist for a little bit. Who? What, um, I don't know his last name. I feel bad that I don't know his last name. His name <laughs> oh, no. was Joe. Um, Joe Schmo. No, yep. he lived. He yeah, sure. <laughs> he lived out like on now. state line. He's like, no, not him. <laughs> um, Fuck Joe Schmo. <laughs> Join the army. What? I know Joe. His last name is Kidwell. Yes, 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 yes. I was gonna say Kid, but I was no. like, man, that's not right. I know You're Joe. halfway there. Joe I know Joe Kidwell. Yeah, so he played with us for a while. Uh, we so we had the three guitars, and as we were like practicing the new stuff, that's when Corey decided he hated it, so he quit, and it was just me and Joe for. <laughs> For two shows, and then we were like, oh, this kind of sucks, I want Corey back. So we got Corey back, and uh, we played as PX Jam again for a little while. And then that kind of fizzled out, and then I did nothing until No Fences. Actually, I played in the church band for a while. Mm-hmm. I played bass oh, in my I, mom's I church band. I didn't count that, because I've been in hell Yeah, I know. I, I, I played in the church band for years. That was probably like my longest like tenure was the church band. <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah, it was a Praying rager. The Lord. It was a rager. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's and then now get by obviously. But uh yeah, that's my history. And what then have you been in? <laughs> uh all of them. All of, every band. Yeah. Every band ever. Yeah, every band. Every single one. So you but you've been like deeply involved in the music scene for ever. Yeah, for forever. In high school I did Battle of the Bands. That's yeah. pretty Battle much strictly the, the reason <laughs> that I joined student council. Did that, and then Java Joe's, where I booked shows for a couple years, and it became the Sanctuary, and then it closed. <sighs> the first closed. show was the Sanctuary. Oh, hit the lights. Hit the lights, all time low. All time low. Asteria, Asteria. cardboard cutout, and yep. down the coast. <sighs> Cutaway blue, and... That whole weekend that was, was amazing. That's a bill, man. That's a yeah, fucking that's bill. A Exotic a Animal Petting Zoo played that half. weekend. Did they? Yep. Yes, they they were the second day. No, but every band on that show that wasn't local is huge now. Yep. Huge. Yeah, it was a good time. 
And then after they close, it's like all the venues kind of close and I kind of dropped out of the scene. And then the last two years I've been with Local Sounds Entertainment, booking shows with a couple friends of mine. And yeah, just doing shows now. Oh, yeah. That's what's up. Very neat. Neat. There was a long period of time where we just played at like Legion Centers and... Oh yeah, the, all the, the Eagles Club, Eagles and the, the Eagles Club, Eagles. Lake Station Eagles Easy. was like key to the yeah. local hardcore metalcore scene. It was just a scene. dirty concrete oh, basement, yeah. it and it was amazing. And it was yeah. the best. I, I I saw some of the best shows of my life there. Oh, That's yeah. where I saw it with Dead Hands Rising, I think three times, and they're, they're still like my all time favorite live band. Just ugh, so good. That's I saw them the first time at the Highland Legion, but then every time after that, locally anyway, was. Do you remember shows Eagles. at the Cock? What the what? Yes, the Knights, the Knights of, Columbus. of Columbus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. 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 Hey, Knights, the yes. Knights of Columbus. That was amazing. We He's were, a Destroyer shows. We're oh, my God. Oh. be like assignment and Auden shows that... For like all summer, every week. Fucking... Every weekend. Pack the fuck out of that place. Oh, that yeah. place was big. Yeah. And it was, it was a decent size room. Kids, dude. It I, was insane. The biggest, the biggest mosh pit that ever started to one of my... Sets. You know, I never had no someone watched on one of your sets. At, uh. at the KOC, when I was in Burnt by Compassion, we played a show with Jersey Wednesday. Oh, oh yep. yes, Jersey and, Wednesday. Uh, oh, fuck. Who was the headliner that night? I don't remember. I don't remember. Out for Blood? It no, might have been Out for no, Blood. Was it? Yeah, probably. It might have been Out for Blood, because I was actually just thinking, I think I was it was James. <laughs> I, I want to say James was there. But you know what? The the guys from Arnold Feeney were there too. So that's that's this is that was the Iscariot show. Maybe it was the Iscariot oh, show. I remember that show. I was there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Out for Blood was also on that show. Out for, probably Out for Blood and Iscariot were like kind of every show together. Out for Blood was better. <sighs> I don't know. Iscariot, those are my homies, man. They 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 were the ones that. Always hooked us up when I was in Burnt by Compassion. They hooked us up with almost all of our shows. I might not be thinking of Iscariot. Well, Iscariot. <laughs> I'm thinking of Pariah. Oh, so I did play that Pariah show, but that's not the one I was talking oh. about. That Pariah show was sick. But the, oh, and Pariah, they they shut all the lights off in the place, and they just had like a lamp, the, the, like a <laughs> oh house God. lamp that they brought out and set in front of the stage, and that was like the only light in the room while they were playing. It was so awesome. Um, Sounds great. Dark. It was cool. No, it was cool. It was like a really trippy, like kind of ambiance. You know, it was, it was... a regular ass lamp. You ever seen a yeah. lamp? I'm like, oh, it's just trippy. I'm gonna Fuck throw it, down with that but lamp. Anyway, so so my point was about this mosh pit, right? So we were we were playing our closing song, which had a, a breakdown at the end. That like we we purposely wrote this breakdown at the end that we could continue this breakdown as long as we wanted, as long as people were still moshing. So like. We started it out, and this place was packed, because I don't remember, whoever the headliner was, everyone was there to see him, but we were like the direct support for the headliner that night, so everyone was already there packing the place, and a mosh pit starts in the middle of our breakdown, and then like as we're halfway through the breakdown, the mosh pit starts getting bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger, so we were like, all right, fuck it, if it's going to keep going, we're going to keep going, so we keep just slowing this breakdown down, and just... Dun dun dun, and it's, eventually it <laughs> gets like fucking wall to wall breakdown. Like no joke, everybody in like the place was pit. moshing. Not even a circle pit. It was like just people throwing punches and kicks. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of the in the middle of the pit, everybody just like shoves everyone out of the way. James Jared, the singer from oh Arnold Feeney Marriage, gets pinned down on the floor. They depants him and they sprayed biofreeze in his ass crack. <gasps> And it was the funniest fucking thing. That's not funny. It was hilarious. Well, for it, everyone else. If you're in on the joke, it's funny. That's yeah. horrific. <laughs> it's time for Brews with Dudes. Ah, juicy. And we're back for another action-packed episode of Brews with Dudes. I'm your host, Nick Maxson, sitting down here... At the North End Pub with Casey Taylor. How's How are we doing, guys? Good, good. Excited. I'm very excited. excited. I'm very excited. The night is young, and I have not had a beer yet. I did have a Dr. Pepper. Um, Whoa. I had, a, 
the leftover Miller Lite I started last night. Ew. That's disgusting. Ew. Is that a so you need serious? this. I do believe that's called a wounded soldier. <laughs> yeah. Austin just always Never has leave to come, man yeah. behind. Austin's no man gotta behind. come out gross every time. Just <laughs> goodness. Gross. I mean, we did that at gate. college when we woke up in the morning. We're Ooh. like, how can we get a cheap buzz at you know? And I was, and I was mentioning it too to my roommate that <laughs> that's what I love about Miller Lite. It's delicious no matter what point in time you drink it. <laughs> uh, delicious uh, is. is uh, I can honestly say I've never drank James leftover I beer. I can honestly say I've never woke up and drank. Oh, you never had that morning where you just <laughs> drank too much the night before. You just needed something, and all there was was a beer right there. I no. have. I've woke oh, up okay. where. Oh, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that better. You drink it, and there's a, you find out there's a cigarette. Uh, oh. no, I've done that. that <laughs> guilty. That's disgusting. <laughs> that's, that I've. I've uh, been around smokers that know they do that, so I've always shaken, shaken the can first to make sure it didn't, like, rattle. <laughs> that is just now disgusting. That we're, can we talk about good stuff yeah. now? Is this, yeah, this is a good... This is where we restart, right? We're right? excited about that's the good we, beer, that's not that's how, how gross right. you Everybody are. knows yeah. I'm here now. That's how yeah. we roll. Positive. <laughs> we're in strong. He, he needs no introduction, apparently. Austin. <laughs> with his disgusting bullshit. <laughs> um, Chris Pilot's also here. I am also here. It's been too long. My lion, since you've been on, I saw on the you show. saw you yesterday. I mean, it's been long since you've been on the show. It, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, still got, I, sa- I said, I told Sean, I said, Chris Pilot, I promise, we'll try every beer we have. That's the one <laughs> thing I love about Chris Pilot. Oh, yeah. If he shows up to a tap takeover, uh, regardless if it's a small list or a long list, he's having them all. And not there. a sample. He's uh, getting pint. Yeah. He's getting it. He, need, he needs the full Pints. flavor. We're 16-ounce tall boys. Ooh. 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 Goodness, there's a lot of those nowadays. Yeah, plenty of those. Yeah. Tons. We're sitting here oh, with uh, Sean from uh, Craft Roads. Craft Roads Beverage. Craft Correct. Roads Beverage. Mm-hmm. He's going to be helping us uh, guide our way through these monstrous brews from Toppling Goliath. Um, you want to you wanna say a little bit about, about Craft Roads, about Toppling Goliath? Yeah, Get us yeah, started? Yeah, right on. Cool. Uh, Craft Roads Beverage has been in, uh, uh, we've, we've been in business for two years now. So basically, we set out to not be a big brand collector. We wanted to bring in some of the best brands throughout the country, and you know, you know, we got a lot of uh, you know great distributors out there right now. We've got Monarch World Class, we've got Sink, Boom Beverage, Cavalier, Starlight. You know, uh, you know, all these guys have some great brands. But what we did not want to do was have a hundred plus brands in our portfolio. Um, so what we were able to do was. Uh, you know, start something small, you know, start up with like three or four brands. We were able to bring Avery Brewing Company out of Colorado back in. They had left a little while ago. Uh, we were able to get Ash and Elm Ciders out of downtown uh, Indianapolis. And then, you know, we've got Evil Check out of Mishawaka, kind of started out with them. You know, and then from there just started, you know, being very meticulous with who we picked. Uh, you know, they had to have good beer. You had to be in business for at least two or three years. You know, it's just, you know, we had to come and visit your brewery and kind of see what you were doing. And you, you got to have a lab in your brewery. That was one of the biggest things that we had to do because, you know, we need to know that you are making some of the best beer out there. And uh, that's so awesome. that's kind of what we set out to do. And so far, you know, we, we're up to, you know, 18, 19 brands right now. You know, Toppling Goliath being the latest one that we just brought into the state recently. Uh, Toppling Goliath being one of the top ranked breweries in the country right now. You know, if you were to go on ratebeer.com and look at every single style, APAs, IPAs, stouts, you know, they've got at least four or five beers in the top 50 list right now. You know, tonight we're going to be drinking a lot of IPAs. They are a very big IPA uh, forward brewing company. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot of mosaic, a lot of citra hops that they use. And, you know, even stouts. I mean, unfortunately, we don't have any stouts right now. Stouts is, you know, what they're known for. I mean, they've got, you know, you know the top five a- stouts in the country right now. But, unfortunately, those are brewery release only beers. I was and uh, it's very, very hard to get. We could get one of their stouts in here. <laughs> yeah, they have the Kentucky uh, uh, breakfast brunch stout. Number yeah. one beer oh, in the world right now. That sounds so yeah. delicious. Exactly. They have the uh, Morning Delight, which is a coffee style aged in maple syrup uh, Ooh, barrels. That's our, uh, that's our stuff. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So, well, you know, it's beer blue balls. We're going to we're gonna have to take a trip up to Decorah, yeah. Iowa to my, get my those beers. Is yes. Mm-hmm. We, just, uh, we just attempted to buy tickets to their Assassin release. The Assassin release, and exactly. It was within seconds. Gone. I was in the queue, and I was out of the queue, like, nope, it's gone, buddy. 
so and fast. It's, gone. it's super hard. <laughs> and it's gone. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so. very hard to get those. But, you know, uh, Toppling Goliath being out of Decorah, Iowa, it's kind of like right where Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa kind of come together. Um, you know, they do 30-plus brew, uh, brews a year. Um, but like I said, you know, very hazy, a lot of unfiltered beers. Even their lagers are unfiltered. Um, as you can see here, I mean, I mean, I call them juice bombs. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, they're very, you know, citrusy, a lot of grapefruit notes, a lot of lemon, uh, pineapple zest to them. You know, you're looking at anywhere between 6.2% to, you know, 8% beers. Uh, but every single, even though there's a lot of IPAs, man, you're looking at some different notes and adjuncts to every single one. And that's what's really cool about them. You know, even their PO, you know, their POS and their cans. I mean, we've got fire schools and money. I mean, this reminds me of Metallica album right here. Um, <laughs> so. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does actually. Yeah. So what are we what are we drinking first? Is it the fire skulls and money? It is. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Definitely the uh, um, the most bombastic of the of the cans we've got here. The King Sue. Um, King Sue is one I would love to have had. Unfortunately, King Sue has been such a very very popular beer as of late. Um, it's it's been hard. You know, we had one huge palate that we were able to get rid of. Um, we were hoping to get some more in last week, but they were not ready for it. And we're like, that's fine. If you're not ready, get us some fresh shit, we'll man. I mean, can. you know, when we get that packaged uh, on date, we're looking at a week on that canned that's on awesome. date. And that's what we want to be. You know, we love running out of beer. Oh, yeah. Because we can get that fresh. I mean, there's a lot of beer that comes into the state um, that's already got like two months on it. And, you know, oh. it's like, you know, there are people that pay attention to that stuff. Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, what is it? I mean, about three months. You need to yeah, I mean, I mean you, after two you know, months, you're West Coast days, style right? IPAs. I mean, I was seeing some beers out there that just came in, you know, recently that already had two and a half, three months on them. And we're talking, you know, beers from two, three states away. You know, I we carry a brewing company called Heretic Brewing Company out of Fairfield, California. They have one of the best beers in the country called Make America Juicy again. Indiana is actually the number one distributor outside their own market in California that distributes Make America Juicy. When we get that beer in... It's at a minimum six days on the Candon life. Wow. That's coming from California. Wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, yeah. They yeah. can it, throw it on the truck and go. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And we fly through it. I mean, when we get 400 cases in, it's gone out the door in like two wow. weeks. We have some heretic. You gave me some heretic. Yeah. We, we have some, some uh, chocolate hazelnut porter that just came oh, in yeah. the day. Cool. And uh, I, got, I got you guys some samples of Make America and Juicier Than mm -hmm. Now, uh, which is Make America with mango. Yeah, so, uh, that's a stay tuned yeah. future brew. That is a stay episode. tuned future brew right here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we don't. So I mentioned the King Sue. That's one that we got in a beer trade. So we we did try that one a couple. Yeah, maybe, I think we maybe four yeah. or five episodes did you give ago. Me one can. I got you guys a King Sue. Yes. yes we tried yeah. It. So we, we tried. tried it, so yeah. it, we so it's not here today. We just got the the it was delicious. Sue. We more, have pseudo more beer, mm -hmm. beer blue balling. <laughs> but it was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, so we're we're in the fire schools and money. What do we got up next? The next would be I always say this wrong, but Sosus. Sosus, it's okay. a double IPA, correct? Yeah. So, uh, Sosus, it's eight percent New England style IPA. Uh, you know, very hazy, very tropical. A lot of mango, uh, uh, almost like guava, uh, guava, pineapple uh, adjuncts to it. It actually rates one hundred. Is there actual pineapple in it? Uh, well, the hops that they use give it that pineapple, you know, flavor to it. That's something that, that a lot of people don't don't understand is that you can get a lot of the fruitiness that you that you would swear is fruit just from hops. Mm -hmm. well, so if it's just pineapple from the hops. You should be okay. I am yeah. trying to spill yeah. this cup over. <laughs> oh my god! No, that's what, it's been a couple I was times. Watching it, it he said like, pineapple, and I looked over at Casey, and he immediately just uh, jolted his cup. Yeah, I'm allergic to pineapple. <laughs> like, but yeah, don't break out no, they don't brew it with pineapple. Uh, that would actually be called a depash. Uh, you know when you have uh, when you Deposh. when you brew something with fermented pineapple Deposh. is it tapage is what it's called. Interesting. Uh, this? But no, uh, no, this beer has a 100 <laughs> style rating on rate beer and wow. across the board. You know, and it, honestly, I mean, a lot of Toppling Goliath beers are up there. It's like 98, 99, 100 on every single you know rating on rate beer. That's why they're actually rated the number two brewery in the country right now by rate beer. Yeah, because when you're drinking these, you can definitely taste the different flavors. And it's like juicy is such a good word. 
And it even like the mm-hmm. look, it's juice got that bomb. hazy look. Oh, yeah. it. it has a great smell. I call them it. juice bombs, man. I mean, that's yeah. exactly what they are. I mean, it, you know, they're you know, that's the thing. It's like you know, uh, you know, I took a I took a four year hiatus off of like you know selling beer, and all of a sudden I come into the beer industry in 2017, and all of a sudden everybody's drinking milkshake IPAs. They're drinking New England style IPAs, and I'm like, what the hell is everybody drinking? They're really trying to appeal to the non IPA drinker, is what they're doing. You know, like I love a good yeah. West Coast style <laughs> IPA. You know, Bell's Two Hard and Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Those were my right of, right of passage beers. You know, and now they're, you know, they're they're making these New England styles and these juice bombs. And uh, you know, this is what everybody's really digging. And then they're just adding a bunch of fruit forward flavors from there. Is what they're doing. This this um, is dangerous. Being seven point eight percent, it is so uh, smooth. It is. Yeah, it's you not, can't taste like the ABV boozy. on it. It's not, um, it. It doesn't have. A, like, this is closer to the style of IPAs that I've, I actually enjoy more. Like, mm-hmm. I used to drink a lot of IPAs and a lot of really heavy, just palate wrecking IPAs. No. Palate wrecking. Yeah. That's <laughs> I love that palate that, wrecking. Yes. That's the name <laughs> and this is not what that is. This doesn't wreck your palate. But, yeah, that's no. the name of one of my old favorites from Green Flash Brewery called Palate Wrecker. It was a triple IPA, and I just loved it just because it was just so heavy and just it did what it was called. It wrecked your palate, and that's what it yeah. Wow, it is what it is. Yeah, delicious. I loved it. So this is called it's called Sosus. Sosus, and it is it's a. Uh, what am I trying to say here? It's a tribute to an artist who did mosaic style art whose name was Sosus. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's got a bunch of mosaic hops in it. That's super cool. That's well, a multi-layer. It was a, a dedication to, I mean, as you see, they ha- they also, have, we'll get to it here soon, they have a beer called Pompeii. Uh, Pompeii, uh, you know, being, uh, you know, has to do with Mount Vesuvius and... Um, you know, in the vol- in the volcano that went off, and you know, there's a lot of mosaic art forms that were buried by a lot of ash. So that's why they brought in the Pompeii and Sozus. It's those mosaic art form is what they did. That's awesome. Them. Those clever folks out in Iowa. I know. They, they keep going, man. I got I got I got more shit rattling up here, dude. That we can get. <laughs> well, that's why we have you on here. Yeah, that's why we have you on here. Yeah, when we uh, when we oh, first... Wikipedia that shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> when we first sat down with Sean, he was just just bubbling over with with info about all the different beers. And Case and I were like, "Oh, we are we're all going to get along great." <laughs> like, no, that's so cool. nice having someone that that actually so wants to talk his, about the beer. He's, got, he's his own R and D department. He is. He already knows. He already knows. Yep, We've yep, been looking yep. for someone to do the to do the research and development for the show. Oh my gosh! If there was only a Jeopardy category for beer. <laughs> the other thing is, you can almost say whatever you want to. We're not going to check. We're not going to know. I mean, you could just be up here just uh, somewhere out there. Some guys like, oh no, he's wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could be up here just full bullshitting us right now. We're no, just we just like, spoon oh, man, just eating awesome. it up. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And we don't have. We we can't. I am the, the ultimate comments. salesman. We're just take. We're just taking it. No one can it correct. Sounds us. good. It sounds right. For sure, it does it does? Uh, yep. You hear that, Facebook? Excellent. We we, run, we don't care what you have to say right now. We're, this guy sounds smarter than you. So no, we're, no, no. He's wrong. I'm looking it up right now. We don't even care. We can't. <laughs> we can't see you telling us we're wrong. We don't care. That might be a fun segment sometime. Though. You said something about beer jeopardy. We should do that. Have people mm-hmm. on, and that would be that would be fun. Or we, uh, we are wanna, you telling the truth? The people. At home, have to say, is this guy just some things are true, some Ooh, things yeah. aren't? Yeah, oh. is this right? Ooh. That's a fun game. You'll, you'll have like three of us up there telling, like, <laughs> this is our truth, and the audience has to guess which one's lying. Hmm. We're gonna have some fun, guys. One of these days, we're talking about playing games, we're playing games tonight. It's more of a board game night, though. Yeah, um, which we've been wanting to do for a while. I'm pretty excited about that. I brought down the big. 20 sided die. We have some fun with that. Ooh. And when you texted me, the autocorrect was exploring kittens. <laughs> so <laughs> exploring <laughs> kittens. So like, I thought, I was like, I don't think that's the game. This I feel like, like yeah. Story, having too much fun. I mean, it's oh. not like exploding oh. kittens is any better, but it was just exploring like. Exploring kittens is awful. That sounds, yeah. That sounds yeah. bad. Exploding, exploding kittens, not, yeah. Sounds just as bad, too. But at least know. occasionally people have heard of the game. Yeah, Is exploding ex- kittens. Exploring kittens sounds like exploding kittens needs to happen afterwards, just as a humane thing for the kitten. Yeah. <laughs> Join us in a new podcasting adventure where we will journey far and wide to worlds, planets, territories, dungeons. I'm Nick. I'm Dave. And this is Dungeons with Dudes. Last time. 
we, the Barovia Bros, entered this town, specifically called Barovia, after our misadventures within the fell, foul structure known as the Death House. In this terrible, twisting town, surreptitiously spooky streets surrounded us, and furtive citizens flounced away from even the slightest of glances. Wow. <laughs> things, very, things very clearly became obviously less than ideal as we spoke to a few of the citizens and discovered that this town is under the thrall of one something something von Strad. <laughs> Strad Editor's notes. Von Strad von Zarovich. Strad von Zarovich. Thank, thank you. We discovered a great deal of things that could possibly be done around this town, but the long and the short of it is we met with one Ismark. Ismark. Is, is, Ismark. Ismark. The lesser. Ismark the lesser, who informed us that Strahd had taken an unseemly interest in his sister, and it was be our duty to take her from the town of Barovia to the town of Valaki. However, first we had to put their father to rest. And we discovered that there was a vampire alive beneath the church in the town. Son of the father, Dorovit. Dorovich? Donovich. 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 My bad. With the day closing, the body put to rest. Now, ahead of us lies the road to Valakia. Valaki. I keep thinking. Yeah. V something. V something. And more importantly, v something. the second grand adventure of Dungeons with Dudes, Barovia Bros. <laughs> uh, by the nine. And we're in. By the nine, he hit the jack. <laughs> <laughs> that that could have been a better recap, my bad. It's good. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Lose okay. a level. Lose no. level. <laughs> Speed of levels. Um, I would know it's that you guys are all now level four. Yes, we are. We already, level, we already did all our leveling. Do you guys feel slightly stronger? Yeah, uh, yeah. Almost like you take out a Strahd right now. Roll this. No, 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 no. Ten. Fourteen. All right, all right, Dave Master. All right, you guys are outside the church. We were debating on burning it down. Debating on burning it down. I think we were right for the to not burn down the church. One of us is. Planning out how to burn. <laughs> Plan that out on the way to Velaki. It's time for us to go. Trek now, arson later. Yes. Um, Ismark says, well, we can go back to the, the mansion. I am going to plug my ears the entire time to try and avoid the screams of the lady as we go <laughs> our way back to the mansion. You still hear sobbing. I'm, God damn it. I'm Jeez. so tempted to knock on that door, but I just know we have to keep going. <laughs> no. We... It's, we will deal with it. Put a pin in it. We will come back to it. I mean, <laughs> fire will end the fire suffering. will cleanse everything. <laughs> Through the fire and the lake, <laughs> carry, <laughs> carry you. All right. So we return to the mansion. What time of day is it? Um, you guys left in the morning. It didn't take all that long for the rites. So it's about about time for some some sandwiches. Yeah, it's about lunch. About lunchtime. lunchtime. All right, all right. We I enjoy a. Uh, Bologna and cheese. She, a you guys hard come fry back. sandwich <laughs> with uh, goat cheese and <laughs> heavily salted meat. Just gonna take out like a bread roll and salty like, meat. Bit, like, a that like, like I got jerky. That that sounds like <laughs> the Ooh. best sandwich I'll be able to get in this depressing ass town. I'm like, yeah. there's a McDonald's. Remember? <laughs> 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 you guys still on breakfast? <laughs> wow, no. you have the McDepression sandwich. <laughs> Our breakfast the hours. Make, are the McDream pastry. <laughs> no. <it's> no! <laughs> No, we've moved past breakfast. Now you got the mixed suicide. <laughs> hey, I'll take a big glass of mixed ketamine. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. So we're making our way back to the mansion. So we're back we to the mansion. Lunch. We're having lunch. We, no. Arena seems, uh, you know, more at ease now that her father has been laid to rest. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's get the and fuck out of here. Yeah, it's just so, chilling. So, okay, do we want... Like, I know this is probably a really stupid idea to voice, but I'm just going to say, do we want to wait another day so we can leave, like, Dawn's first light? Or do we just want to like, uh, That's, go? Wait, that's not a bad idea, actually. But, that's, okay. That's up uh, to going, the group. Going off your idea, if we're here for the entire day, I'm not going to sit up cooped in this house. I'm going to help someone. 
but that's like also look at the big balls on egg <laughs> i mean he's not wrong I, I agree i'm not gonna waste an entire day doing nothing yeah so all that, that i'm saying it's hey, really everyone needs to take a day do we <laughs> this is not time for a self-care day do we <laughs> do we what, what do what does everyone else want to do do we want to burn a fucking shirt <laughs> Okay. Now, okay, let's, guys. Let's put Bring the Church. I, I gazed out for one second. Let's yeah. come back to this. Pun intended. Let's put that on the back burner. <laughs> what are you guys trying to talk about? I thought we were, just, we were going to get the girl. Right, right, so, so basically, uh. the, the, the discussion was, and I'm, we're probably looking too far into this now that I say it out loud. Do you want to just say, fuck it, leave right now since it's still pretty early in the day? Or do you want to, like. Because we're, like, about noon right now. No, yeah, a little afternoon. Oh, okay, we, do we want to leave in the afternoon? afternoon? So we got about half day light, and we could leave now, or we can try and leave at the first light. Leave at the, the first light in the morning, but that's gonna. If we leave at first light, that gives us a lot more time that we can travel without being in the, at in the dark at night, which is apparently a really bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mark that's says not a bad a, idea. Is Mark said it's probably best to avoid traveling in the at dark night. as much as possible. All right, so, so I would, I would, I would cast my vote for staying here for around a day. these parts. Okay. I would cast my vote for staying here for a day. All right, which if that's or for the, an afternoon, if or that's the, the case, case, what do we want to like? We're not just going to sit around. Do well, we, we've got if spa it's, day. If it's, is that what you said? Spa day? <laughs> if it's about, if it's about <laughs> midday right now, we've got about six hours, seven hours of light. We would want to be back in the in the mansion at night, though. Yeah, we have time for so, a side quest. <laughs> do, exactly. That's why I'm asking. Do we have time for a short I side mean, quest? Our options are go crazy bag lady, crazy bag lady. We could. <laughs> that's a nighttime thing. She doesn't that, come till night. Evening thing. Yeah. Oh, shit, All right. That's right. Okay. So basically, our options. A couple hours to kill before we go get the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. So that means our options are church. We have we have base, we have base no. vampire. I vote to stay away from the church and maybe help out the lady who's crying. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That we passed. We can't day. avoid it any longer. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to the sobbing house. <laughs> the sobbing house. Unless oh, twice. What do you say? It was twice. The wife's orphan would never. Go to that crying house or give it crap. Twice Orphan would know there's a vampire in that basement and it is something that needs to be vanquished. And why it would why? just be just, that's the I'm, lawful part of him saying we need to end this. I evil. would argue, my argument would be that we know that that vampire came from Strahd. I would say we kill Strahd or we do something with Strahd, we could probably knock out two birds once. And my argument would be we don't know how long it's going to take us to get to Strahd and kill him, and he's, we don't know what sort of damage and harm this vampire could do if it ever gets out. And he's had him chained up in the basement for a year. I think he's good for another 24 hours, hopefully. I would say, I mean... Are we gonna can we agree that vampires are... The vampires inherently need to be slain? Yes. Yeah. Like, we we're have to. It's 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 we've got to. They're, they're bad. They're bad. Going that priest to, if we do that. If there's a way that we can peacefully... Absolve this boy of his, you know. Disease. We've got six hours. There's really not. Okay, so the thing about that is, uh, may I make a religion check? Yeah. To dis- to figure out if there's a way to non-violently mm-hmm. remove the curse of vampirism. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that Ooh. would be a twenty-one. Um, I'm not sure D and D our characters D and D and D follow the same. I mean, I think it's kind of up to. You up to the DM oh. in a lot of cases but it's just wow. like <laughs> I mean I have a if you legitimately just don't have a, a, an answer to this question I it's, it's you know it was typical vampire style so you, you um, I'm to a stake through the heart or decapitation well like yeah we, if we we don't have to kill him if we go down there put a stake through his heart well, no, then again... That the, kills him, doesn't it? No, 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 it paralyzes him. Yeah, he's immobilized. Oh. But the problem is, then if you remove the curse, he's got a funny stake through his heart. And we can't exactly go, oh, we're about to remove the curse, time to pop back on over there. Yeah, one, two, three! Yeah. How about... We're we... really good at getting distracted. Father, I bet... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, Dad? honestly, it's kind of... Dad? I... <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, if we want to get rid of that vampire, we have to kill him. Um, but... Well, it... his father's a priest, right? Yeah, his father's a priest. So, so he probably knows some way of... We have medicine had, of some sort. He would have done it by now. Yeah, he's had him down there for. He's a had no, no, a no, what year. What I'm saying is, if he has a, st- if his son has a stake through his heart, I would imagine that he would have some sort of way uh, to heal him of his wound. Uh, so all we have to do is just wound. tell the priest. That's a that's a pretty pretty big. Yeah, you. I I'm I'm following you. I'm with you there. But, but it's like, reaching. It's starting to reach because like yeah. So I mean, you make a fair point. He's it's all like, hey, there's a ball over there. I just don't feel... Twice Orphan makes a very good point. We we know a vampire exists, and 
who you know who knows how long it's going to remain chained down. I feel, down. I, I feel I would conflicted also, because let me throw this out there as well, real quick. If we're going to kill a vampire, we are in a city that pretty much exists at the whim of a very angry, very old vampire. He's not like. Do you really think he's going to give a fuck about some little spawnling that he just uh, like? I don't know. It, you think I don't if know, he gave a fuck, want... he'd be letting it sit in that basement it for years I, up. If I'm a vampire and I hear that somebody's going around offing vampires, I'm not going to be too happy about Strahd's it. Strahd's been having people come around saying, saying they're going to off vampires. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that one vampire been locked in a basement forever is not going to make him go, I'm fucking pissed now. <laughs> so we, It's been so 10,000 years and this is the last bit. <laughs> 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 this is, fuck these guys. <laughs> so, right here. Uh, now. So, sometimes, so, you know, man, it's just a wing that was my favorite okay, vampire. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So let's, let's, let's put it to a right vote now, cast a vote. And uh, well, that'll decide it. I'm fine with that. I'm, Everyone else? I would say house. I'm voting house. You're voting house? Yeah. I'm voting house as well. Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Vampire. Roadhouse. I, I gotta go for vampire. Uthal makes a convincing case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue. No. no. Yeah, there's no, no arguing decided. after this on what we're going to yeah. do. We're just... It's up to Corin. All right, Corin. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. We're all staring at you as we've just... We're decided. tied. We're tied. Uh, we need a tiebreaker. Thanks, Nate. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, Nate. Hold on, Nate. Shit. I love you too. <laughs> Check us out solving things democratically. Um, no pressure, Nick. I don't want to go in that house. I kind of figured you wouldn't, so. All right. I also don't really want to kill this vampire, but I, I'm not going in that house. <laughs> okay. I'm not going in the house. I don't really want to kill this vampire, though. But you will if, you, if it needs to be done. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going Corin in the house. Corin votes for drinking. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. Stop trying to get me a drink. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> burning a church. What is Corin's <laughs> official vote? Uh, I say let's go deal with the vampire. Okay. How, whatever that. Whatever that's going to mean. All right. All right. That, then I, that, that's what we're also, doing. Also, real quick, um, just some things of note. Um, this vampire has been in here. He said he's been in here for about a year now. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, that means he's either been fed and his father is evil and we're we might be walking that's, into a trap or he's going to be a concern. really weak vampire or Either he's gonna way, be fucking savage at this point I, exactly he's gonna be completely feral so we need to prepare on how to deal with vampires so we need to find wooden stakes we need to well, get there's a lot of holy water there's a lot of wood all around here and Does like it have to be a specific wood no okay yeah, you guys could probably find something to whittle i'm pretty sure uh corn shoots wooden arrows I mean, but it, the thing is is I like my my Main concern is I don't want anyone getting bit and infected with this vampirism. But I guess that's the risk we run, right? When you're when you're in the vampire business, yes. That's the, yeah, that's um, the risk you run. Yeah, your, your life expectancy is probably guess, not that high. I guess we're going to have to... <clears throat> I'm I feel bad. Everybody, avoid the hickey. We're going to be fine. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are going to the church. We are going yes. to the church. We're going to the church. Just turning around. Are we still just standing there? <laughs> we... We're already at the church. <laughs> oh yeah, Pat <laughs> Dot left the church. Well, no, we went, we went back to the we went back to the mansion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We got lunch. The priest has got his ear up against the door, like these fucking crazy bastards. <laughs> Listen, assholes. Guys. And he starts praying louder. His voice is just out, and he's just. I, uh, this is my I have to. Asshole I have to say, it's a little, it's a little, little disconcerting that we're taking the uh, arsonist back to the. Dear church. God, <laughs> these bitches be tripping. <laughs> Bless upon me that these bitches Dear God, this eight foot two Goliath is saying, let's burn a fucking church. And we're all like, yep. Alright, <laughs> right. I say we go, we're going to the Can't refute that, let's go. <laughs> Alright, let's go. That's quite right. a persuasive tra- 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 argument you have there, Twice Orphan. You guys uh, make your way to the church. Yep. You pass the sobbing house. Um, <laughs> as, yeah, as I'm walking by, I'm like, shut up! <laughs> You should. <laughs> uh, you do not see any uh, any cart ladies, any old cart ladies. That's good. good. That's we would have got uh, distracted. Out of sight, out of mind. So do we, want, do we want to say that each of us has like made a stake? Made a stake. I can say that. You guys sure. Find some yeah, we're not going to be disconcerted to the priest or anything when we come in. He's he's been waiting for a year to find stakes. a nonviolent way to end his son or exactly. to end the curse of his son. We're just going to march in with a bunch of stakes. In the front of his axe. <laughs> <laughs> so that way when he swings in, he's I'm just going to swing a yeah. staked axe. So hold on, hold on, hold on. 
We're going to go marching past the priest who spent the last year hoping I'm, for a nonviolent me, solution for his son. And we're going to all march in strapped with stakes. Right. Let me. <laughs> you got it. Pay no attention. We're fine. Perfectly verbalized. <laughs> all right, Ag, Ag, you, you want to deal with the priest? I will handle the